Good afternoon and happy Halloween, Glen Estee High School. I am your wizardly host, Sean McNamara. And I'm your football host, Christian Bogus. We have a big newscast for you today, so let's get started. We will have a soccer report and Halloween interviews with Lindsay. Then we will talk about the Reds with Taylor. Holden will have tech news and tech talk with Drew. And lastly, we will sign off with the History Club field trip. As you know, fall sports are coming to an end here at Glen Estee. The soccer team has been quite busy this fall. And to give us the full scoop, here is Lindsay Singleton. My name is Megan Redmond. I am the head varsity coach for the women's soccer program. This is my first full year as the varsity coach. Last year I was assistant and took over half the season as the head coach. Our overall record is 6-5-1, and one, and in conference we are 1-4-0. Our record does not show the potential of how well these girls are doing in um, our competitive league. We um, have been able to compete in every game at a competitive level. In comparison of this season from last season, we were able to grow our program and be able to have a JV and varsity program. We have nine new valuable players that were added to our varsity team, um, three seniors, three juniors, one sophomore, and two freshmen. They have really been able to help us out within our win winning record. Last season overall, we were 3-12-1, so halfway through our season, we've already beat our record by doubling our wins. I'm Emily Willenborg. I am a varsity player. I get to play forward and outside half of midfield. I played last year. A lot of girls didn't come out. I played last year as a freshman, so it was kind of hard. I played a whole 80-minute games with only 13 players, those two subs. This year, we had a lot more girls come out to try out, <clears throat> and we've been doing a lot better than last year, obviously. And we actually have a JV team this year. Last year, Megan was our assistant coach at the beginning and then became our full head coach. This year, she is our full head coach and she has been doing a great job with having to deal with just one coach last year, having no assistant. And this year, we have an assistant and they're both doing good. The new players that have come out, they have really helped the team a lot because last year we didn't have that many. And they have brought a lot more girls to this team they're bringing us a lot closer than we were last year. And they have helped us win a lot more games. And we've been doing really good this year. Halloween is coming up, and we had our reporter in the field, Lindsay Singleton, go out and ask people what they have to say about Halloween. Hi, I'm Lindsay Singleton with Glen Estee News. I went out and talked to teachers and students about their plans for Halloween this year. Hi, I'm Lindsay Singleton, and I'm here with Bailey Sanders. Bailey, do you think high schoolers are too old to go trick-or-treating? Definitely not. No, because it's free candy. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I think everyone should enjoy Halloween. No, nah, I think if you want to get trick-or-treated, that's cool. I don't do it, though. Yes. <laughs> and why do you think this? Um, because they're old. How old are you in high school? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17? <laughs> it's old. It's, it's too old. No, I don't. And I don't mind if they come to my house if they're all dressed up in a nice costume or something fun. Um, but if you come to my house and you're not dressed up and just have a pillowcase and like a hat on, then you get like the Tootsie Roll or the uh, Sweet Tart. You don't get the fun full-size candy bar. Halloween is right around the corner and there's lots of creative ideas for costumes this year. Let's see what Glen Estee students are dressing up as this year for Halloween. What do you plan on dressing up as this Halloween? Batman. Uh, I was thinking about being Barack Obama. Uh, I have no idea. I plan to dress up really nicely, Lindsay. I'm going to look fantastic out there. You're going to see me running around with all these little kids. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> um, what please stop laughing. This is a serious interview. I'm not a fan, but I was invited to a, uh, to a party, and it's a Star Wars theme, so I'm going to have to wear something Star Wars. And of course, you can't have Halloween without candy. Let's see what students are most looking forward to getting this year for Halloween. What candy are you most looking forward to this year? Um, Probably Twix. Three Musketeers, and that's about it. Probably Sour Patch Kids. I'd probably have to say chocolate. Reese Cups. Everything. Who eats candy? I like corn <laughs> and corned beef hash. How much candy can depend on what neighborhood you go for for trick-or-treating? Let's see where students are going to this year for Halloween. What neighborhood do you plan on going trick-or-treating in? Um, if I go McGuffey. Nowhere. I gotta work. East Fork, um, Neighborhoods, and this other campsite my aunt goes to, but I always forget the name. Either Batson Park or Shaler. Well, I live in McGuffey, so I'd probably trick-or-treat there. Neverland Ranch. The Cincinnati Reds did a great job this year. They almost made it to the World Series, but it slipped through their hands when they lost 6-4 to four to the San Francisco Giants on October 11th. Taylor has a rep full report for you. After the Reds took an exciting 2-0 lead, 
in the series in San Francisco, Reds fans are already envisioning the Reds moving on to the NLCS. With the second best record in baseball, we are favored as the National League representative in the World Series. But regular, seasons don't, regular season records don't matter when the postseason rolls around. The Reds took the series back to Cincinnati, needing one win out of the, any of the next three games. The odds were favoring the home team. San Francisco did the improbable, sweeping the Reds at home, which didn't happen in any series during the regular season. This is viewed around the league as the busy, biggest collapse in postseason history. With young, talented bats and depth with the pitching staff, the Reds' early exit is nothing short but devastating. All fans are left wondering what might have been, but next season looks just as promising with the extension of Dusty Baker's contract keeping him as the Reds' manager through the 2014 season, and the majority of the team's players still left under contract. Most of your 2012 Reds will return next season, giving us hope that they can repeat their success this season, hopefully killing any postseason demons and bring the city of Cincinnati a World Series title. Now, here is Holden with your tech news. Uh, 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 uh. Hi, I'm Holden Robinson. I'll keep you updated with the latest tech news. Last week, Apple introduced updates to their products. In addition to the Mac Mini and 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display, the new iMac stole the show. Their new iMac features a design that's sure to impress. In both 21.5 and 27-inch models, these iMacs feature all new internals, while being only 5 millimeters thin at the edges. At the same event, Apple introduced the iPad Mini and surprised us all with yet another iPad. The Mini features a design that resembles the new iPhone 5, coming in black slate or white and silver. The Mini features similar specifications as the iPad 2 with an A5 processor and the same screen resolution, but packed in a 7.9-inch display. It's a ridiculous 7.2 millimeters thin and 0.68 pounds. It has the same 10-hour battery life as the larger iPad and starts at 329. The fourth generation iPad, referred to as the Retina iPad, has the same design as the old iPad, but features new internals making it twice as fast. It also includes the new lightning connector as the Mini and all the other iOS devices. Microsoft's Windows 8 is now available along with the new Microsoft Surface, their competitor to the iPad. The Surface is a tablet with a detachable keyboard. It features Windows RT, which is a lighter version of Windows 8. The Surface Pro will be out soon, featuring a full Windows 8 experience. The Surface starts at $599 with the attached keyboard. Now it's time for Tech Talk with Drew. What's up today, Drew? Well, I'm, what's up, Glenn Estia? I'm Drew Bronner, and I'm here with Alex Stone and our Apple guru, Holden Robinson. Here to talk about the uh, new iPhone 5 and the Samsung Galaxy S3. Now, Holden, the iPhone 5 has been out for a while, and so has the Galaxy S3. Could you tell me a little bit about these products? They're simply the best options that you can get. Almost all the carriers have them, and both of them, you can't go wrong with any of them. Okay, so uh, which of these do you personally like the most, Alex? I personally like the Samsung because it seems to run faster than the iPhone 5. Uh, if you were to go off specs, which would you buy? I would... Definitely buy the Samsung over specifications. It has almost double the RAM, and it's a quad-core processor versus the iPhone's dual-core. If you were to buy these phones, are you getting for what, what you pay for? From what I think, yes. The Galaxy S3, you can definitely get what you're paying for. Uh, if you were to go off the commercials, which, which phone would you buy? Apple has always kind of made simple commercials. But they're pretty dumb. They're starting to get just way too crazy. Um, but Samsung has made a, some great commercials for the Galaxy, and they're really banking on those commercials. Thanks for joining us with Tech Talk. I'm Drew, and now it's up to you, Glenn SD. Which phone do you like better? And finally, the History Club took a field trip to Pioneer Village. We go to Holden Robinson with the report. Hi, everyone. I'm Holden Robinson with Glenn SD News. I'm here at Caesars Creek Pioneer Village with Glenn SD's History Club. Today, we are joining the Harvest Festival. Here's a look what all is going on.
here with History Club teacher, Mr. Mason. Can you tell me about what's going on at the Pioneer Village today? Yeah, this is their annual harvest festival, um, and it's all about the early 1800s. This whole village has been restored. They've brought several old buildings here from all around Claremont County, Hamilton County, the whole area. And now what they're doing is they restore these, people adopt these different buildings, and then a couple times during the year they'll have special festivals here. And this is their harvest festival. Um, everyone's dressed up in different costumes, you go in and out of the houses, and they just talk about all the different types of uh, activities they would do. Okay, um, tell me what made you decide to take this trip to Caesars Creek? Well, um, I've come up here several times myself, but at this point we've come up here with History Club. This is our, I think, third time now. Um, and the kids always really like it. It's usually a pretty good time. Now today it's uh, a little low on attendance because they had a lot of rain this morning and it's just now starting to clear up. But you can see it's still kind of windy and cool, but worked out perfect for us. We got here just when the rain was pretty much over. Um, so we kind of have the whole place to ourselves. How can other people get involved with History Club and come on trips like these? Anybody that wants to be in History Club, you just have to be a Glen Estee High School student. Um, you can even be going to the Oaks as long as your, your base school is Glen Estee High School. And we have our meetings every Friday during lunch. And I have a two-tier meeting, one lunch A and one lunch B, so that all students that want to participate can come. So if anybody's interested in doing this, we do these about once a month. We try to take a field trip to a, an area here just surrounding um, Cincinnati that has historical significance. So we're going to be doing several more this year. So if you're interested, just come by any Friday for lunch A or lunch B, my room, room 415. We'd be glad to have you. Uh, as a first year member, this is my first field trip. We're at Caesars Creek. I've been having a really, really fun time so far. The whole thing's like a renaissance themed era park. And it's just been really interesting walking around, seeing the locality and the history of how things were around this time. Halloween is a fun holiday where you can dress up and have a good time pretending to be someone or something else. But you also have to be safe. If you are going trick-or-treating tonight, make sure you look both ways for cars before crossing the street. And always trick-or-treat with a buddy so that you are with someone you know. But most importantly, have fun. This is all we have for you today, Glenasty. I'm Sean McNamara. And I'm Christian Bogus. Confundo! How was that, Christian? That was an all right spell. I think you should try something different, though. Wingardium Leviosa. Oh, Sean, Sean, put, put me down, Sean. Put fine, me down. Fine, fine, <coughs> Sorry. It's all right. Uh, let's get out of here before you do anything else like that, all right? All right, I'm hungry. <laughs>